Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3. Whom we serve now. Hey, that is the condition. You are serving the Lord in holiness and righteousness. Every day of your life. Then God will see to it that you are protected when that time comes. So you are serving God in faithfulness. And you take care of his word in faithfulness and obedience to the Lord. That's the condition. And they said the God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning furry furnace and he will deliver us. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, can you be sure? Because we have read his promise. We have meditated on his promise. We have accepted his promise. We have internalized his promise. And we believe that God will not fail. He knows the meaning of that promise. He gave more than we do. And because we rely on that unfailing promise, we know he's going to fulfill that promise. He'll fulfill it on your behalf in Jesus' name. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning furry furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Let's look at number two there. Number two there, we're looking at the performance through the Father, Son, by decree. By decree. It tells us in Psalm 2, Psalm 2, I'm reading from verse 6. In, verse, in Psalm 2, verse 6, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Now, the two kings say now that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to, con had to think about, had to consider the king of Babylon and then the king of the believers, the Lord Jesus Christ. In, in your situation, in your life, if you make your heart, your mind, the eyes of your heart, to center on the king of this world, and you will exaggerate their power. You will exaggerate their ability. You exaggerate what they can do. But if you turn around and you look at your own king, because Nebuchadnezzar is not your king. He's the king of the Babylonians, and you are not a Babylonian. You look at the king of kings and the lord of lords. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, I will declare the decree, the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son this day, have I begotten thee? When we center our mind on the author and the finisher of our faith, on the king of the righteous, of the king that God himself has set, on the king that has the final say in our lives, he will preserve our lives in Jesus' name. Think of what Christ has done. Think of what Christ can do. Think of what Christ is doing. Think of the promise of Christ. Think of the power of Christ. You will have faith and you will be persuaded that God will perform everything he has promised. Look at Romans chapter 4. We're reading from verse 20. Romans chapter 4 verse 20. He staggered not the promise of God. He says, when you pass through the fire, the fire of persecution, it will not burn you. It will not affect you. It will not destroy you or kill you. You do not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Then in verse 21, verse 21 says, and being fully persuaded that he had that what he had promised he was able also to perform there'll be a performance in your life look, look at verse look at number three here number three here is the purpose of faith security and deliverance why did god deliver shadrach Meshach and Abednego. Why? As he promised, is going to deliver you. He will deliver you. 
Look at Acts chapter 5, reading from verse 17. Acts 5, 17. Then the high priest rose up. And all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation, like Nebuchadnezzar in verse 18. It says, and they laid hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Verse 19, verse 19 says, and they, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors. The purpose is without test, there'll be no testimony. Without trial, there'll be no triumph. They wouldn't have seen the visitation of the angel or it nor that they were cast into the prison. When something negative happens, so-called negative, apparently negative, there is something positive that will overwhelm, overcome, overthrow that negative thing in your life in Jesus' name. Because they were cast into the prison. That's why God could send an angel from heaven and deliver them. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said in verse 20, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life is to make us continue in the work he has given us to do is to make us do the work and not say because of the prison because of the incarceration because of the misunderstanding because of the misplacement on punishment on the people we should be praising because of that hands down and they will do not the work will do not uh, what he wants us to do he says after coming out of the prison go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life verse 21 in verse 21 it says when they heard that they entered into the temple early in the morning and they taught the word of god let's look at uh, chapter 26 acts chapter 26 the purpose the purpose persecution comes then there's perseverance and then there is preservation the purpose of that perseverance and preservation acts chapter 26 verse 16 but rise and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose what do we have revelation for this purpose? What do we have the grace to endure for this purpose? What do we have deliverance from the persecutors for this purpose? What do we get healed after we have been so sick we thought that might be the end for this purpose? What do we have any special uh, kind of uh, intervention? from God, from heaven. The reason is for this purpose have I appeared unto thee to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things and the which I will appear unto thee. Verse 17, it says, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I sent thee, verse 18, the purpose is to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that sin me that the purpose eh, when we're delivered let's remember the purpose uh, you know you've been going out for morning cry and some people wanted to attack you and the lord delivered you what's the purpose of that deliverance to go out again for the morning cry you have been doing the will of god and bringing people to christ and then 
challenges came, trials came, and persecution came, and the Lord delivered you from the trial and the persecution, can you say, I will not go that way again, I will not do that again? You know you cannot, because your deliverance has a purpose, and your protection has a purpose, that you'll go out again, and keep on preaching the word and bring many people to the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 18, we're looking at verse 9. Acts chapter 18, verse 9, then speak the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Now, if you're only preaching, preaching, and preaching, and you are not praying, you might not have the revelation of the Lord. If you are walking, walking, and walking, and you are not in communication with the God of heaven, you may not have this privilege of having the night vision. And you may be so busy working for God and preaching the gospel and running up and down that you don't have time to develop your communication with the Lord. And so, when these challenges come, the Lord wants to talk to you, but you're too busy. You're busy in the day, you're busy in the night, you're busy every hour, and you do not develop your communication um, ability with the Lord. It may not come to you, but you see these apostles in the New, in the New Testament, yes, they were busy. Yes, they preached everywhere, but they preached unto the Lord, and they sang praises unto the Lord, and they read the word of God. The word was not only for the people they were preaching to. They were applying the word unto themselves. That's why God was able to communicate with them because they kept the communication channel with the Lord. They kept that open. Do not be so busy that you don't have time to pray and to refresh yourself and to hear from God. Don't study the Bible only to go and preach, but study the Bible as well that it will be applicable to your life. And then speak the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak. Be not afraid, but speak. Persecution has the tendency of making uh, uh, the persecuted people afraid. They see the power of the persecutors. They see the fire, the fury of the persecutors. They see the determination of the persecutors. And uh, eventually, they become afraid. They are centered on the power and the perseverance and the persistence of the persecutors. It makes them afraid. But if you always go back to God, preach, go and pray, preach, go and lean upon the Lord, preach, and go and enrich yourself in the word of God, then the fear of the persecutors will not seize your heart that you'll not be able to continue the work of the Lord. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. Then in verse 10, in verse 10, for I am with thee. For I am with thee. You understand? That's reaching Isaiah chapter 41, but Paul did not just read it in Isaiah chapter 41. That's in Jeremiah 2. I am with you. But Paul did not just read it there. God took that word out of the book and applied it to him. For I am with thee. And no man shall say it on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. Then in verse 11, in verse 11, and he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. We're coming to point number three now. In point number three, we're looking at the promotion of uh, the righteous uh, for further fruitfulness. Why will God promote us? Because we're useful already. He wants to give us more further 
usefulness. Why will God preserve for us? Because we'll be faithful and he knows his word is in your mouth. Because of that, he gave you that deliverance for further usefulness, profitableness in the kingdom of God and fruitfulness in the kingdom of God. We're coming to Daniel chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 28. Daniel chapter 3 verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him. Delivered his servants that trusted in him. Simply trusting every day. In the morning, afternoon, and evening, trust in every day. Whatever befalls, whatever comes, trust in Jesus that is all. And because they trusted in him, he has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies. Understand that? They changed the king's word but you must be willing to yield your body because there will be persecution, there will be misunderstanding. So if you change the word of the persecutor, if you change the plan of the persecutor, if you change the intention of the persecutor, they will count you stubborn. They will count you heady. They'll count you a kind of defiant. And, you know, persecutors don't like you being defiant or disobedient. Whatever you are thinking about, whatever other God you have allegiance to, that's not their concern. Their concern is this is the way to go. The persecutor said, if you say no, you must be ready to yield your body to more pain. If you're not ready for that, then you cannot change the king's words. But it says they changed the king's words and they yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. In verse 29, in verse 29, therefore I make a decree that every people nation and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be caught in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunk hill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Verse 30, in verse 30 it says, then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Three things we're looking at. Uh, number one, deliverance for God's uncompromising servants. They will not compromise because of that. God delivered them. Number two, declaration of God's unchangeable supremacy. That God is high, high above any other emperor, king, conqueror, anyone in the world. Number three, dominion of God's unconquerable sins. Look at number one. Number one is the deliverance for God's uncompromising servants. We've read already chapter 3, verse 28 of Daniel. Let's look at Daniel chapter 6. We're reading from verse 22. Daniel chapter 6, verse 22. My God has sent his angel, and he has shut the lion's mouth. Again, understand, fire was created by God. The lions were created by God. And when God does not want them to eat up anything, he shuts their mouth. He has that power. And all the lions of this world that might want to eat the righteous up, God has the power to shut the lions' mouths and that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done 
no hurt. Really, king, you know in your heart, I've not done anything to merit being thrown into the, into the lion's den. And since God knows how innocent I am and how righteous I am, how faithful I am, how helpful I am, how profitable I am, even in your kingdom, the Lord has sent his angel and he has shut the lion's mouth. Now, in the case of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they saw the Son of God. They saw the fourth one. They were walking together, talking together. In the case of Daniel, there's no record that he saw the angel. Yet, whether we see the angel or we don't see the angel, the promise of God tells us, assures us, the angel of the Lord will be there by your side every time.